بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته As students are starting their academic year it is suitable to speak about the leader of scholars in the hereafter a person who embraced Islam at the age of 17 or 18 before the Hijrah of the Messenger وسلم, although he was from Medina he came in the second pledge to pledge alliance to the Messenger وسلم, and he participated throughout the life of the Messenger وسلم, praised during his youth his young age Ka'b he said he was among the best out of all the youth of his tribe and praised when he became a man the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam how good is a man how good a man is muad bin jabal radiyallahu anhu muad bin jabal stands out as a student and as a teacher so from the moment he embraced islam it was very noticeable that he was keen about seeking knowledge and gaining as much knowledge as possible for him he used to ask the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam get close to him and try to get the knowledge from the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam directly and uh, the scholars mentioned or the sahaba mentioned some of the stories of how persistent he was in seeking knowledge one day Abdullah bin Mas'ud mentioned that he came to the Messenger وسلم, and said to him, O Messenger of Allah, teach me the Quran. Recite for me the Quran, make me recite it for you. Uh, it seems the Messenger وسلم, at that time was busy. So he said to Abdullah bin Mas'ud to teach him. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud did. Why Abdullah bin Mas'ud? Because he was among the scholars of the Quran at that time. <laughs> And furthermore, because he was the brother in alliance with Mu'ad bin Jabal. Abdullah bin Saud from Mecca, Mu'ad bin Jabal from Medina, the Messenger وسلم, made them brothers after the immigration. And they continued to learn together. And he continued to take the knowledge directly from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is interesting is that the Messenger وسلم, noticed how keen he was in seeking knowledge and he used to get him close to him. One day they were in a caravan. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked over. He did not see anyone close to him except Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu anhu and his camel. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, I, I never noticed that the people were so far away from us. Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu anhu, uh, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, come closer, get closer, closer, until their camels almost touched. They were this close. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi said to him, O Mu'adh, by Allah Almighty, I love you for the sake of Allah Almighty. Mu'adh radiallahu an was filled with joy and he said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I too, O Messenger of Allah, by Allah Almighty, I love you for the sake of Allah Almighty. When he noticed the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in this mood, he was not busy with anything else, he said, O Messenger of Allah, I have a persistent question question that bothered me a lot I need to learn I need to understand it usually the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam if you notice before he says leave me until I speak to you isn't it don't ask too much so that the religion will become will not become difficult for you do not ask about little things and details so that you will make the religion difficult for yourself and for the Muslims later on because if you will ask me I will answer you I'm not going to leave you without an answer but there are many things, as the Messenger وسلم, explained to, to us, Allah Almighty pointed out something and He left out some things. These things that Allah Almighty left out, He did not lift them out of negligence or ignorance. No, He did not forget them. Allah Almighty left them intentionally so that the religion will be easy. Understand? So that is why the Messenger وسلم, usually does not encourage. But here the Messenger وسلم, is saying to Mu'ad a different thing. He said, ask me whatever you wish. Because he knows. He's a seeker of knowledge. And as someone who is going to waste time 
find sometimes in the fatwa session, some people are asking theoretical questions only. How are we going to apply any of that in our life? None. Nil. The early Muslims used to dislike these questions. Don't ask except about something practical. Does it benefit you in this world, in the hereafter? Fine, ask about it. No, then stop, don't. So what was the question of Mu'ad radallahu anhu? Mu'ad radallahu anhu asked only one question. Guide me, teach me something that when I do, Allah Almighty will admit me in paradise. How practical is that? Main goal, how do I succeed? Simple. No other question. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained to him, basically, the basis of Iman, the basis of Islam and dealing with people. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, you believe in Allah Almighty in the hereafter, the basis for belief. You establish the salah in the other narration and you pay the zakah and you fast Ramadan and you perform hajj, the pillars of Islam. And you worship Allah Almighty, the general worship, any kind of ibadah, anything that you do. Sincerely for the sake of Allah Almighty without associating anything or anyone with Him. Fine? Fine. But the Messenger ﷺ does not stop. He teaches him more. Because he knows he is a seeker of knowledge. So he says, shall I not teach you? And then the Messenger ﷺ tell him, shall I not teach you about the basis of this religion, of this whole matter of Islam, about its pillars, about the highest uh, pinnacles in it. The Messenger of Islam explained to him about all type of goodness and whatever thing you do. Finally, after explaining all of that, the Messenger of Islam said to him, shall I not tell you about something that encompasses all of these, the whole matter of Islam, all of it. Shall I not talk about one thing only? That summarizes all of that. Subhanallah, when a person hears this from the Messenger Sallallahu his mind might wonder about every aspect of the religion except the one that the Messenger Sallallahu is going to explain. Surprisingly, the Messenger Sallallahu took hold of the tip of his tongue and he said, restrain this. Control this. This is the summary of the whole religion of Islam, yes. Control this. Means don't say anything that angers Allah Almighty or harm people, the creation of Allah Almighty. It's very easy to say, to say but it's extremely difficult to do. You might think this is a little thing, it's just, it's, it's just a talk. So Mu'ad Radana was surprised, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, are we going to be held accountable for what we utter, what we speak? The Messenger وسلم, said to him, oh, Mu'ad, what brings people face down in hellfire, God forbid, or nose down, diving nose first on hellfire, except the produce of their tongues? Most people are going to be admitted in hellfire because of their tongues, subhanAllah means you are not going to succeed if you do not control this. It's very difficult, very difficult. Most people are going to lose a huge amount of their rewards and good deeds because of their tongues. Mu'ad was a keen seeker of knowledge. So he wanted to increase often and often and often again. He used to sit with anyone who is more knowledgeable than him, about anything, and try to seek knowledge from him. So much so, that eventually he became the most knowledgeable out of all Muslims from the time of the Messenger until the end of time, till the hereafter, with the saying of the Messenger وسلم, the most knowledgeable out of all my followers, all my nation in halal and haram is Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu anhu. was the result seeking knowledge, staying and being keen about it, and continuing to do that. And he was one among those who gained specific knowledge of the Holy Quran, memorized the full Quran at the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Four were outstanding among them. One of them was Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu anh, and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say to the Sahaba, the rest of the Sahaba, recite the Holy Quran from these four. One of them is Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu anh. 
In fact, he was one of the teachers during the time of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After the opening of, the, of Mecca, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left him in Mecca to teach people the Quran. Teach people the religion and the Quran. The next year, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent him to Yemen to teach them about halal and haram and be their judge. When he finished this assignment, came back, the Messenger ﷺ has already be passed from this world to the hereafter. So he went through all the way to Levan, to Asham, to the north. He participated there in the conquest and he started teaching people there the Quran and Halal and Haram. He was very famous for this aspect of knowledge, outstanding in knowledge. So much so, Umar one day he was delivering a speech to the people uh, in, in Jabla, near, uh, in, in Syria nowadays. And he said to them, seek knowledge from Mu'ad bin Jabal. Take advantage, Mu'ad bin Jabal is with you, so seek knowledge from him. Twice this opportunity. Many of the Sahaba used to be there, in Asham, Damascus, in uh, Syria, in uh, uh, Jordan, Oman. But when Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, Mu'ad bin Jabal stands out or comes to the people, all the people will gather around him. He's the most knowledgeable out of all of them. After his life, long life in knowledge, he finally passed uh, away in uh, Jordan nowadays, Amman, Jordan nowadays. So you see, traveling the world to teach people, mashallah, spreading knowledge. He understood about the importance of gaining knowledge, being keen in it and established in it and specialized in it, as we have seen, standing out as one of the rare specialist in the Holy Quran during the time of the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and after his life. All of these achievements and he died at the age of 34. So he did not live in Islam except approximately 16 to 18 years. Two different narrations. That was his life. But these were the outstanding achievement to be the one who will be the leaders of all scholars in the hereafter. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Hadith, Mu'ad bin Jabal comes in the hereafter ahead of the scholars with a step or two or a level or two. Ahead of all scholars. In such short span of life. But that is the idea. This is the lesson we learn from the life of Mu'ad radiallahu anhu. It's not about how many years you spent. It's about how dedicated you are, how keen you are, and how then specialized in your sciences. He was the most outstanding in two different types of knowledge. The Quran, halal and haram. Not everything. That is why in the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, when he mentioned the outstanding Sahaba, he mentioned in each field one of them. Specialization is something that we are lacking nowadays. Find people, mashallah, they have knowledge about so many things. But they're not specialized, they're not outstanding in any one of them. Why would you do that? You have to. He was one of the rare Sahabi who were given the authority to give fatwa during the time of the Messenger وسلم, by the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, himself at this young age. Muhammad bin Jabal radiallahu an, an outstanding figure for students as a seeker of knowledge and as a teacher as well. He has three motives of his teaching to people. Wisdom and patience and love. He used to express his love to students. Any outstanding student here. He learned that from the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi when he was a young man with the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi at the age of probably 20, 20 something. The Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam expressed his love to him because he was seeking knowledge and keen about increasing his knowledge. So he used to anyone who is outstanding and seeking knowledge among his students, he used to declare to him. His love for the sake of Allah Almighty, because he is a true keen seeker of knowledge. Nowadays, alhamdulillah, it is very easy to find knowledge if you want it. It's very easy to gain knowledge. It is available everywhere. No excuse for anyone to say, I didn't know. No excuse. You can get the knowledge from authorized and authentic sources while you are in your own room, relaxing, even reclining in your bed. And call toll-free numbers or write your question and get the answer. No excuse. Alhamdulillah, nowadays, in this beautiful countries and worldwide, there are schools and institutes and universities 
all places of knowledge. So uh, a message to the students, take opportunity of this. This is a huge, beautiful opportunity. Seize this opportunity. Utilize everything that is available for you to increase your knowledge and increase your understanding and your speciality. A few years ago, people used to travel worldwide just to seek knowledge because that knowledge was not available in their countries. Nowadays, alhamdulillah, everything is available for you. You can even increase it online. And many of it are free of charge as well. Another one is to the parents. Another message to the parents. No school whatsoever it might be can sustain all the burden or undertake all the burden. It needs your cooperation as well. You have to encourage your child. Tell him about the importance of knowledge. Seeking knowledge. Respecting the place of study, the teachers, the fellow students as well. The knowledge itself, he has to respect. This is something that is huge. This is not a little thing. Final message is to the teachers themselves. You are doing one of the greatest work ever. You are talking about the future generations. All their knowledge, all their achievements are lying with you. You put the foundation for all of that. And do not make it only uh, uh, a method of gaining some salary or some living and that's it. Sadly, some, some teachers are like that. He just wants to finish as soon as possible, giving them as little as possible, whatever he could get away with without any punishment or... Uh, that is not the, the idea. The whole idea is try to find out what each one of them is good at and try to guide him to that and increase his knowledge in that. Give him more time and space on that, even outside work. You have to see the potentials. And try to guide them to that. This is the whole idea of being a teacher. It's not the idea just to re read whatever is in the book. They need you for that type of education as well. And remember that the profession of a teacher is the same profession of the prophets and messengers. And Allah Almighty sent them to humanity as what? As teachers. Allah Almighty, when He described the messenger, وسلم, His relation with people, He says, and He teaches them the wisdom and the book of Allah Almighty and the wisdom and how to purify themselves. Three aspects. Since this is what we need nowadays. So Alhamdulillah, uh, we are at a time when knowledge is increasing and expanding and spreading. And we have to do our part in that. We have to do our duties. The Islamic civilization, when it took the guidelines in Islam for seeking knowledge, it led the world in science and technologies and discoveries and innovation for hundreds of years. And it will continue to do that. It doesn't stop. This nation of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the followers of Islam, it never dies. It will never die. It could go to sleep, yes. Be backwards sometimes, yes. Have a fall here and there, for sure. Some hiccups here and there, for sure. But it will never die. It will rise again. And usually rise very quickly. Alhamdulillah, we are living in a country that is giving us, uh, uh, it, it is personifying the example. This is the example of the concept. You are talking about a country of a desert within the span of 40 years or so. It's becoming one of the leaders in every aspect worldwide. And it's still aspiring to be number one. It will continue. Muslims, are, the moment they start doing, Allah Almighty will bless their work. He promised to do that. But you have to do your part. Don't rely upon Allah. You have to initiate. You have to start. When you do that, Allah Almighty will open the fields for you. Allah Almighty will open the possibilities for you. But if you are lazy, if you are sleeping, if you are not doing anything, and you are praying to Allah Almighty, you are being incapable. This is the true inability. No, you should not do that. As the Messenger وسلم, said, the one who is truly disabled, not the one who lost his eyes or ears or... Uh, one of his abilities. No, the Messenger وسلم, said, the one who is disabled, truly disabled, is the one who wishes from Allah Almighty. Wishes only. And he follows his own whims and desires. He does not do anything. He does not do anything, but he wishes. Hopefully Allah Almighty will, whatever you are wishing for. If you are not working towards it, it's not going to happen. 
And it's not how it works. You have to do your part, then Allah Almighty will benefit you. So we'll conclude with that, inshallah, may Allah Almighty guide us to uh, benefit from the life and, and the seerah of these great figures in Islam throughout history. Pray to Allah Almighty to guide us, to make us good seekers of knowledge and good carriers of knowledge and good spreaders of knowledge and teachers. May Allah Almighty guide us to His divine truth, make us good for ourselves, our families, neighbors, and society, and then to all humanity. Amin. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.